Uh, that sound you're hearing is, you know, modern jazz. And uh, I, I always hate to go into a subject uh, that I just have a veneer about. And I've always had one philosophy that the only person that actually understands modern jazz is either a musician or somebody who's been with musicians so long. I feel I'm pretty jazz oriented, but uh, not enough ever to criticize. Uh, well, dig, like if you play uh, uh, Horace Silva and Oscar Peterson and together and blindfold me, I will know the difference, you know. And I'm not going to shuck anybody and tell them, yeah. Uh, and I feel that a lot of jazz audiences, there's a lot of snob appeal and there's a lot of pseudo of people who listen to jazz. And I, I think I'd like to get maybe Ralph Gleason, Nat Hentoff, Ira Gittler behind me, you know, and say, this guy is the greatest jazz sound in the world. He's so hip. His name is Lenny Bruce, you know. The guy said, what does he play? Well, it's hip, man. He plays money. You ready? So I got to like, open up in bird, anyway, in bird land, blah, 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 the den, anyway. That kind of, you know. And I go, oh, uh, Nat, play fours with me. Any kind of, start the four. Any kind of four. And Lenny Bruce. And they go, wow, he's too much, man. He's wild. He's out. <laughs> so that's really the kind of thing. With the exception, though, of a few. Now, here's where I'm maybe going to step. I'm not going to step on toes because I, uh, I haven't got that much time to talk about that many musicians. But with just like thinking out of the blue, uh, there's certain guys like Miles Davis or Thelonious Monk, just a few people that you don't have to know anything about jazz. They just zoom, they come through, they have some kind of thing they can communicate. Buddy Rich has that kind of thing. Boom. Philly Joe, bam, for Cannonball. Like a few people, boom, I think that it's a, it's a thing, you know, they can like, you don't have to know the scene, you can just feel it, you know. But as far as getting very technical and uh, like progressive jazz, you get the chord structure, the guy ad-libs from the chord structure, and if you don't know what the chord structure is originally, Jim, you're out of the scene, you know, and, uh, but there's one place uh, that I shot some more footage last, a couple of Sundays ago, it's called Birdland. Can you run the, run the Birdland footage for me, right? Like, and, and I'll tell them about Birdland. Uh, now, this is Birdland, and as far as consistently giving the biggest jazz names in the world, these people put it down. And they sent three giants to represent them. Dave Lambert, John Hendricks, and Annie Ross. If you'd like to hear more of Lambert, Hendricks, and Ross, uh, they've got a nutty album on roulette, as you see there, and it's called Sing Along with Basie. And uh, Miss Ross's gowns are by Depinna. Those are weird album notes. <laughs> There's, uh, uh, although I record uh, for fantasy, uh, I think that the giants of the recording industry, guys who record, guys who knocked me out like Gigi Grice, Art uh, Farmer, Donald Byrd, are roulette. They're just too much. Uh, it might seem odd to you that I'm laying a little heavy on jazz on the show, but I want to prove a point. I read in Winchell's column, uh, whenever I hear the jazz tutors, that's my cue to switch the dial. Well, I feel that jazz is great. It's a listening medium, and if it's presented right, it can swing and people will dig it. Yeah. A Riverside album, they've got uh, well, Thelonious, who I talked about before, the Thelonious Monk Orchestra at Town Hall. Beautiful people. Uh, <clears throat> a guy who is a good friend of mine. Well, they're all good friends, but I'm very tight with Philly Joe Jones, who did a nice thing called Blues for Dracula. And uh, a too much person. Cannonball Julian Adderley. There he is. That's his thing. Now, here's what I wanted to do. I said, all right, instead of just blowing, I figure it's sort of a gimmick. That's what it is, a gimmick, you know. As I told you, the original premise, we start out with something. I went to the Modern Museum of Art. I'm very interested in modern art. Uh, I know about it, so I feel I can report on it. And I wanted to tie up modern art with modern jazz. 
So what I did, I filled some exteriors and interiors, and I want to have Cannonball, that's his nickname, Julian Adderley, to play along with the film. Now, I'm not going to put you on and tell you that this improvisation. I had him look at the film, do a little thought, and swing. So roll the footage, and, uh, yeah, roll the footage now. Roll the footage, Modern Museum of Art and Cannonball, swing, Daddy, make the theme. <coughs> You and might think, you know, that that, that that that's a bird tune, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. A, what is it? Alu Charles. What is it? Alu Charles. Yeah. Now this was not as definitive as the bit that I'm going to get into. First, I, I know we've only got one camera because we're hung up preparing for another bit. But this is Cannonball. This is Mr. Oh, Kodak. Oh, yeah. And this is. Uh, can you see Mr. Evans there on piano? I guess you can see, right? Yeah. Well, and Philly Joe Jones. Uh, do a little bit of Dracula. Drac I'll do fours with you. Permit me to introduce myself. Permit me to introduce myself. We'll do a thing together. All right, now, to get serious <laughs> for a minute. The painting, I picked a painting in the Modern Museum of Art at the time they were having the Miro exhibit. Uh, the painting was a Peter Bloom. Peter Bloom won the uh, Guggenheim Award, which is pretty coveted, went to Italy in 1937 and did a modern painting called The Eternal City. Now, what I've done, I've cut up the painting with the help of John Wagerman, a brilliant photographer, to cut to the different things and get the feeling of the painting. And it's called, well, I should tell you front, that this was Italy when Mussolini was starting to swing and uh, he felt there was a villain in sight. I sound like Milton Cross in the second opera of Il Voce di Vesile. <laughs> <they'd fight. laughs> that kind of thing. Well, anyway, uh, it's Peter Bloom, the eternal city, and Julian Cannonball Adley makes the jazz scene with the thing. And the painting will be on the monitor, and you can swing and improvise. <laughs> Thank you. 
He's very dead. There's a brilliant musician here. Very tasty. Go to the Modern Museum. Uh, there's a well day spent uh, for 75 cents. That's pretty wild, huh? Uh, one thing I noticed about uh, the Modern Museum of Art is that most of the paintings were donated by the Rockefellers. Uh, I never dip into politics. I'm being very sincere with you. I don't know the state, you know. But uh, the governor must be pretty much of a swinger. Because if, uh, number one, there, he's very wealthy, so there's no profit motivation, so he won't be swinging with any bread. And the fact that he has, he's oriented, he, there's a sensitivity with art. He's probably a pretty nice person, and I like that. Uh, and, oh, by the way, go to the Met, too, the Gorgan exhibit is there. Giant heavyweight painter, and you'll flip out. Get sick when you look at this guy. Color is supreme. Go see. Go again. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm going to do a tune now, which isn't my forte, but I like, um, I speak Italian. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to do a, a tune from a show. It's Yip Harbach tonight. What is it? Harbert? Yip. I didn't even see his name on the music. Yip, you name dropper. E.Y. Harbert. He wrote, uh, did he write the whole uh, uh, Phineas Rainbow? Too much, yeah. Very talented, very delightful. And I'm going to do a tune uh, from the show. Uh, and dedicated to Ellen Logan. You like that? <laughs> like, like, let's see how things in Glock work. Okay. I hear a bird, a London dairy bird. It well may be he's bringing me a cheery word. I hear a breeze, a river Shannon breeze, it well may be it's calling me across the sea, so tell me this, how are things in Glockamora? Does that little brook still leaping there? Does that lassie with a twinkling smile come drifting by? Or does she walk away sad and gloomy there, not to see me there? So I ask each weeping willow, and each brook along the way. How are things in Glockamora this fine day? How are things in Glockamora? How are things in Glockamora? How are things in Glockamora this fine day? Did you like that now? It's Glockamora time. Did we go black? Get off me now. Get out of here, you. That's right. Get. Where are we going now? To a commercial. To nothing. Oh, yes. Oh, by the way, this might come as somewhat of a shock to you people. Uh, but the station's prime motivation for this show is profit. And that concerns our next act. And that's the commercial. Like Isaacson, you did a wonderful job now. And not him. Try not Pearson. Pearson. Mishpucha. Right. 